Hi there, let's visit a little bit uh, about something that happens a lot when we're parenting or teaching really challenging kids. And that is they, they tend to pull us into battles over things that we have absolutely no control over. It happens in little shades of gray and pretty soon we realize that we're exhausted and we're having a lot of power struggles we can't win and it kind of looks like the kid's energized by it. And uh, the strong-willed kids are very different than easygoing ones. Uh, easygoing kids get their energy out of uh, uh, pleasing people and uh, saying yes. And, and strong-willed kids who are wonderful and often turn into really wonderful adults they get jazzed up and revved up by our emotions and uh, saying no and seeing us go through some gyrations trying to control them. It's almost as if they wonder on a subconscious level, I, I, I wonder if I could pull these adults into power struggles. They can't win. And then they won't have energy, any energy left over to really uh, deal with the stuff they can win. It's also a test. It's a test to see if the adults are strong enough and love them enough to be wise and be healthy authority figures who can set and enforce limits. And so what's part of the solution? Well, the love and logic, as you've probably already figured out, is mostly about the adults uh, changing or doing some things different than really trying to control other people. That's why it's effective. And so a lot of people, though, they, they decide uh, from time to time I need to sit down and do what Dr. Fay calls his wishes versus controls exercise. And we can do that together right now. And uh, so I'm going to say some things and, and about kids and situations in the family. And then you can uh, think about whether they're a wish or a control. And, and wish means that we wished we could control them. <laughs> we really do, but uh, wish we could, but we can't. And of course, a control means, yep, I can control it, even if the other person gets really resistant. So how, how about uh, the tone of a teenager's voice? Well, I, I've tried to control that, but which one is that? Well, that's a wish, isn't it? And uh, I, I know when I've tried to control it, uh, their voices usually get louder. Well, how about the color of a, a kid's hair? <laughs> I often use that one as an example. Uh, for a while around here, kids were dyeing their hair crazy colors and parents were going nuts over it. And um, but some of the wiser ones realized that it is what? A control or a wish, <laughs> that's a wish. How about uh, kids' uh, beliefs about different things like religion or politics or other hot button issues? Is that a wish or a, you know, yeah, yeah, there we go. Boy, we're starting to realize that there's not a whole lot we can control. How about the kids' uh, level of motivation from within? I mean, we can, uh, we can up the odds on these things. I'm not saying we don't have any control over them, but how about direct control? Making that kid do or believe what we want them to. Oh, attitudes about school and motivation. That's another battleground that, uh, well, it's, it's a wish, isn't it? Okay, well, what are some of the other things? How about the, the bodily placement or speed with which a large kid or teen moves about the universe? <laughs> we can control it with a toddler or maybe younger kid, but, oh, man, there's another wish. How about our own attitude? Oh, wait, that's a... That's a tough one, but yeah, I, I can control that, my own attitude, but you know how hard that is? It's a hard thing, uh, and I, I often remark, wow, look at this. I'm having such a hard time controlling myself today, and who do I think I am to be able to control anything about somebody else? But my own attitude is something I can control. How about to whether I loan the car? Is that a wish or control? Oh, yeah, we're, we're, there's some hope here. 
how about uh, whether I do the extra things that the kids would like me to do? Not basic needs, but wants, like order them pizza or cook them the food they really like or even wash their clothes, their favorite clothes. Uh, who is control o has control over that? Well, I do, and, and I, I can control that. Oh, yeah, see, well, we all know the answer, and you knew it before you even clicked on the link for this video. You knew that the only thing that any of us can control is ourselves. And again, that's, that's pretty tough, even that. So what would happen if, from time to time, you kind of meditated on this concept? Like when you felt like things weren't working very well, or Maybe you were frustrated in your marriage because does it also apply to adult relationships? What would happen if you sat back and asked yourself this question, am I trying to control things that are way beyond my control? And you started using enforceable statements. I allow, I provide, I'm happy to do when certain situations or circumstances are put in place. So I'm happy to listen when your voice is calm. And I'm always willing to allow kids to live at home as they're, when they're in college or whether they're working towards climbing up the job ladder as long as it's really fun and for me. And uh, we're not having power struggles and honestly, I'm not having to do a lot of housework because they're doing it. I always am happy to allow kids to stay at home and uh, it's good for the kids too, isn't it? Right? I mean, I, I just read the story about the 30 year old who had to be evicted from its parents' home and uh, did they spend a lot of time uh, probably early in his life, uh, you know, trying to control things they couldn't and not controlling the things that they could or should and now he has no respect for them? Oh, isn't that sad? Well, let's uh, look at some other examples. How about uh, the kids' schoolwork? Uh, well, can I control whether the kid hands in his papers? I knew a lady who used to think she could, and she really gave it a, a, re a good old college try. She sat down with this big kid and forced him to do his papers, and and it all looked right with the world until, well, the English teacher calls the mom and says, hey, you know, there's, there's a problem and I'm not seeing any of Chuck's papers. His name was Chuck. You know, something about those people with that name, right? And so the mom says, I don't know what's going on. He did all those papers. I forced him to do those papers. I made him do his papers. And well, uh, some of you have heard this story before. The papers are all stacked up in his... Uh, locker. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine how mom rocketed off planet earth when she found out about that? And can, can you imagine how much control, unhealthy control Chuck felt when he saw mom blasting towards Venus? <laughs> oh my goodness. So there's another concept here though. And well, first is, can I control it? The second is, should I control it? Even if I can. I mean, are there a lot of things that maybe we can control if we work hard enough, but really don't need to? Oh, I, I struggle with this. There's, I want things to turn out okay with my kids. And, and so there are times when maybe I control things that I can control, but it's too much. Maybe I, yeah, I, I can maybe micromanage enough to to get him to do his chores or, or I might be able to micromanage enough to get an easier going kid to uh, practice the piano if I want him to, but is it really something I should control? Or if I'm doing that, am I getting him kind of used to somebody just micromanaging? See. Truly, I believe that it's safest to have an extremely strong-willed kid. It's safest for you, and it's safest for the kid. Because extremely strong-willed kids don't put up with bad techniques. <laughs> they let us know, and they bring us to our knees pretty quick. 
See, the kids that I worry about the most are the kids that will go along with it. Uh, for one reason or other, or maybe it's temperament or who knows what, it, they will put up with micromanaging. And, and we don't know that it's had a, a very negative impact on their sense of self until they're older and they get out of the world and they feel lost and they're still very nice people, but they don't have any skills and they don't have any drive and, and they don't know how to make decisions for themselves. And isn't that a sad thing? So I hope this was helpful to you. And as one friend to another friend, let's kind of get quiet here and ask ourselves two questions for the rest of this week. And we'll see if it brings you any peace. The first one is, can I control this? Second is, should I control this? And you might add another just for chuckles. Yeah, is the kid trying to control me? Because <laughs> once in a while, when we start really becoming cognizant of this, we'll start noticing what they're doing. We'll notice that they're trying to pull us into a power struggle. And then when we don't bite, we'll notice that they ramp it up a bit. And when we don't bite on that, we'll notice that they ramp it up even a little, little bit more than that. And uh, what's fun about that is when you start being so conscious of it that you recognize it and you down deep inside, you kind of want to giggle a little bit about it when it's happening. It, I, I think that beats <laughs> wanting to throttle the kid or whatever. So, oh, appreciate what you do. Care enough about kids to really dedicate your life to them. Have a great one.